Hello! This video is about non-gradient optimizers, also called gradient-free optimizers. And what is that? Well, when you want to train something like a neural network or a machine learning model, you need an optimizer. And the optimizer is there to help you minimize the loss function and help you get to the best possible neural network you can have. However, sometimes it's hard to take derivatives. For example, when you have a quantum neural network or a quantum circuit, not always it's easy uh, to find the derivative. So what do you do? What you do is you do non-gradient optimizer. So you use an optimizer to minimize the loss function or whatever objective function you have, but without using derivatives. And so today I'm going to show you two very powerful non-gradient optimizers. One is called CMAES or Covariance Matrix Adaptation Evolution Strategy. And the other one is called PSO or Particle Swarm Optimization. And the names sound complicated, but actually the algorithms are very intuitive. CMAES, the E stands for evolution, and it's actually an evolutionary algorithm. It works mimicking the way evolution works in species. And PSO works mimicking the way a bunch of particles fly around helping each other minimize the function. So let's get into the details. So let's start with CMAES. Imagine that you want to minimize this function, that means finding this point. So what's going to happen is that there are going to be some random points here and that's going to be our species. That's going to be the first generation of the species. Now imagine that these points get stronger and stronger because they evolve like the way a species evolve. And eventually after some generations, one of them finds the minimum. That's the idea. Now let me be more detailed. Imagine that you want to solve a problem. And in the bottom, you have the bad solutions, and at the top, you have the good solutions. And you want to find the best solution, or at least a really good one. So you start with the first generation. Pick some random solutions. So let's say this five. And now, if this were a species, then this species would go through natural selection. So the weakest members die. Let's say these three die. And let's say these two strongest ones remain. And those are the ones that reproduce. So they have kids, that's the next generation, and they are like them. Some of them are stronger, some of them are weaker, but that's the next generation. And then again, natural selection happens. So the weakest ones die, and those two strong ones reproduce, and they have a third generation that's similar to them. Some stronger ones, some weaker, weaker ones. And again, those die off, and then the fourth generation looks like their parents, some stronger, some weaker, and boom they managed to find the perfect solution, or at least a pretty good one. Now it's common in this type of algorithm to add some randomness, which simulates the random mutations that sometimes species go through, which can sometimes make them weaker, but can also sometimes make them stronger. Anyway, this is the idea that we're going to use to minimize functions in CMAES. So let me get into more detail now. So let's minimize this function over here. This is a gradient in which the mountains are yellow and white, the valleys are black, and the points in the middle are red. So it can be seen like a landscape from the top. Since these are the values of a function, then we're interested in the optimal points or those in which the function is minimized. That's the valleys. And ideally, we'd like to reach this point over here. That's the minimum value of the function, so it's the optimal point. Now this function is in two dimensions, which has two parameters, but you can imagine this happening in higher dimensions. Say if your function has 14 parameters, instead of a gradient in the plane, then you have some gradient in 14 dimensional space, but the procedure is exactly the same. So now we'll apply the evolutionary strategy just as before. We're gonna start by picking five random points, for example, these ones. Then we'll look at which are the strongest. So what's stronger? Well, since we want to find the minimum value of the function, then the strongest are the ones where the function takes the lowest values. So those are the ones who survive and the rest die. So we're going to pick these three points to survive and those two die. And that's going to be our first generation. Now the question is, how do we get these points to reproduce? So for the points to reproduce, we're going to use a multivariate Gaussian or normal distribution. If you haven't seen it, no worries. Just imagine a bump in a gigantic sheet like this one. When we see it from the top, you can see it like a bunch of contours like this. If you'd like to know more about the Gaussian distribution, there's a video on my channel linked in the comments about the Gaussian distribution and you can take a look and learn more about it. But for now, all you need to know at this is that it is a bump in the plane. 
and when seen from the top basically the dark points are higher and the light points are lower. Now what's special about the Gaussian distribution or actually of any probability distribution is that it's somewhere where you can sample random points. So you can sample a point out of the distribution over here and you're more likely to pick points that are up in the mountain than to pick points in the plane. So in the contour plot, basically, the more green the area, the more likely that a point will be picked there. And another very important property of Gaussian distribution is that if we have a bunch of points, there's a way to pick the best fitting Gaussian distribution to them. That's the one that more likely produced those points, so the one that produced them with the highest probability. So now, let's apply the CMAES algorithm to minimize this function. So we're going to start by picking these random points, this five over here. The first step says only the strongest survive. That's the points with the lowest value. So we're going to kill off the two weakest ones over here. Step two says let's try to fit a Gaussian distribution of these three points because now what we want to do is we want to reproduce these points to create a new generation. So we first fit a Gaussian distribution to the three points and then those three will die but five new ones will come in. And so the five new ones are five sample points we're sampling out of this new distribution. And so they kind of look like the three strongest ones because they are picked from the distribution that was fit on those three strongest points. So those five points are second generation. Now we do the procedure again. The two weakest ones die off. Then we fit a Gaussian distribution to these three remaining ones, the strongest ones, and then they reproduce. So they die and new five come in. Then the two weakest ones die. Then we fit a new distribution. That's more and more generations. Then five new are born. Then the two weakest ones die off. And then we fit a new Gaussian distribution. Five new points are born out of the distribution. And notice that eventually our generation happens to be so strong and it does so well that it finds the optimal point right here. And that's it, that's CMAES. Now, there are some drawbacks. CMAES is not perfect and like in most fast optimization algorithms, it will have some problems. It will not guarantee it's not guaranteed to find the minimum. So for example, let's look at this landscape from the side where there's peaks and valleys and that's our first generation and if we are to run CMAES and get better and better generations maybe we got here and we thought oh that's a really good point that's a minimum but in reality that's just a local minimum the global minimum is over here that's the one we really wanted to find but we're not even closer this, this species didn't even get to this global minimum because the algorithm got stuck in a valley and it can't move out of there. So this happens to gradient methods as well and to many optimization algorithms. So what can we do to fix this? Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do to guarantee we're going to find a global minimum, but we can add some randomness. So for example, we can modify the points a bit, adding random mutations that will make them better or make them worse, but at least it'll help them explore the space more. Another thing that we can do is start with a different, uh, different initial generation and see how it goes. So maybe the one we started was not ideal, but maybe the second one is pretty good. So we can run this algorithm several times and, uh, and uh, try our luck and hopefully one of them will find the global minimum. The good news is that we don't absolutely need to find the global minimum. Sometimes, especially in machine learning, a pretty good local minimum can do the job quite well and help us do well in our problem. So that's all for CMAS. So now let's get to PSO or particle swarm optimization. I like to imagine PSO as a group of friends who are in some terrain with hills and valleys and decide to join forces together to find the lowest point of the terrain, which is this one. Or at the very least, if they can find the lowest point, find some point that's good enough. Now, and the height of every point of the terrain is the value of the function. So this is equivalent to minimizing a function. And what all these friends do is that they walk around while talking to each other and sharing information in order to collaborate in finding the lowest point. So let me elaborate. Here's an example. Let's say this is the terrain, the same as before. 
yellow points are high and black points are low and the red points are in the middle and the ideal point is this point over here, this valley. And let's say that the friends are these five people over here. Now there are three strategies I'm going to show you individually. Neither one of them do works very well, but in the group they work really well. So the first strategy is called inertia. The second one is called personal best and the third one is called team best. But the best strategy is going to be all. It's going to be the combination of the three. But first let's see them individually. So here's the inertia strategy. Now we can assume that these people have been walking in some direction already. The inertia strategy consists on each person simply continuing on the direction that they're walking right now forever or at least until they leave the terrain. Now after each person walks we record the best point among all the points visited by these people. In this case the optimal point was this one over here and that's the lowest point of the terrain that they could find by walking in that direction. So not a great method but it got us somewhere. Now let's look at the second strategy which is personal best. In this one we also assume that the people have been walking for some time but that they've been recording where they've been. Now imagine that each person remembers where's their personal best, that is where's the lowest point in the terrain that they've already visited. So number one has this personal best and number two and number three, four and five. They remember the best point they've been to. Now the personal best strategy consists on each person walking towards their personal best and when they do this we can see that the best place they managed to find was this. Among all of them, the lowest point they managed to visit was this. So that one didn't do the job, but it got us somewhere. And now finally, strategy three is called the team best. Now this one consists of people talking to each other and figuring out what's the lowest point in the terrain that any one of them has visited so far. So that means as a team, what's the lowest point they managed that one of them has managed to reach? And let's say that it's this one over here. When they were walking around, somebody got to that point and that was the best point they managed to find. So the strategy consists on all of them walking towards this point and continuing until they leave the terrain. Now, where did this strategy take us? It managed to find this point, the lowest possible point. So again, not an amazing strategy, but it's got us somewhere. But here's what's special. The three strategies don't work well, but when combined, they work like a charm. So we'll combine them in the following way. At every point, each person will walk one step in the inertia, in the inertia direction, the direction they were already walking, then one step in the personal best direction, and then one step in the team best direction. If you're familiarized with sums of vectors, then we can say that each person will walk in the direction of the sum of these three vectors. But I like to see it as like you simply walk one step in each of the three directions. And it's one tiny step because we're going to run this many times. And now what's going to happen is that every single one of the people will continue in this strategy in tiny, tiny, tiny steps for a while. And so personal bests are going to change, team bests are going to change, and their inertia, the direction where they are, is going to change. So this is a continuous algorithm with basically very, very tiny steps. And this one works really well because it really explores the space, but with an emphasis of minimizing the function based on previous knowledge. So as you can see, when the people follow the strategy in this example, they manage to find a point that's pretty optimal. So that's it, that's particles for optimization. So that's all folks, thank you very much for your attention. I'll remind you that I have a book called Rocking Machine Learning that I highly recommend if you like these type of explanations. Here's my channel, please hit like to the video or subscribe for more content or throw in a comment. I really like to see your comments. And actually many of the videos come in from ideas that people give me in the comments. Also, you can tweet at me, Lewis Likes Math is my Twitter handle, and check out my webpage, serrano.academy. That's where all this information is, including videos, blog posts, papers, anything like that. And if you're interested in the book, here is the link, it's also in the comments. And there's a 40% discount code for the users of this channel. So it's Serrano PC. You can use it to get the book. And finally, this video is part of a blog post that I did with Zapata Computing called Why Generative Modeling is Leading the Race to Practical Quantum Advantage. So I very, very highly recommend this blog post. The link is in the comments. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.